operating on the 20 metre ham radio band after dark. It's quite interesting actually. And that's what I've been doing recently. Operating after dark to see what actually happens. Hello and thank you for joining me on this uh, video. I shot a video uh, a few days ago. Uh, I was using a uh, little action camera upstairs in the radio room and I thought this is quite interesting. I'll video this because I've had one or two queries about uh, reverse beacon. I've, I've covered reverse beacon a couple of times but I think um, some viewers are not quite sure how it actually works or exactly how you actually set it all up. So in this video I'm going to show you how I was uh, doing some experiments with propagation a few days ago. Uh, I chose to do it after dark, after the 20 metre band sort of quietened down a bit. Because we're in the summer period now, 20 metres doesn't really close, it's open for most of the night, at least on most days. So I thought I'd do some experiments to see whether, what sort of super DX you could actually work, whether it was possible. So anyway, take a look at this video and it'll give you some idea of what I was doing. Hello once again and thank you for joining me on this video channel. I've had a number of inquiries recently about reverse beacon and how to use it. I have done a video previously but I thought I'd um, do another video and uh, just show you practice. And this is um, a very sort of hastily set up uh, video. I've just got a single camera I'm using which is a basically a sort of small handheld camera. Um, and uh, I've got the Yesu uh, FT710 which is my current HF transceiver, love it, superb receiver, very very quiet and um, I've also got a linear amplifier, the ACOM uh, linear amplifier and uh, what I'm doing, I'm going to set, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to run high power tonight, um, I'm set up on 20 meters at the moment, uh, local time here is quarter to nine in the evening, 20 meters is sort of it's active, but it's not, it's not too much coming through at the moment. Um, we're just entering the grey line period for the Pacific. Um, I think the sun has already risen in New Zealand and it's just about to, uh, to uh, rise in Australia. So what I propose to do is to um, put out uh, some test calls and just show you how you get the uh, results on a screen using reverse beacon. Now I've got no idea how well it's going to work. Uh, the last two evenings I've actually managed to work into Australia at around about half past nine in the evening on 20 meters but uh, there's no guarantee it'll happen tonight but it'd be interesting just to see what reverse beacon shows so I'm going to set it up now. This is my HF station very simple as you can see the transceiver there, linear amplifier there and I've got a screen up top there because uh, uh, it helps me to uh, see what's see what's going on. In uh, reverse beacon on an old uh, Apple laptop, it still works okay, but it's about uh, 12 years old. And you can see on the screen there the um, uh, screen of the reverse beacon. And you can see they show the grey line there, and all you can see there. But uh, it's sunrise. Um, has occurred in New Zealand and we're just coming up towards uh, sunrise um, on the tip of Australia there. Now the first thing you need to do with the reverse beacon is to log on to it. So if you go into Google or whatever your, your search uh, engine is and just simply type in reverse beacon. Just put reverse beacon in the search and I'll show you what comes up on the screen. I'm sorry by the way I haven't got the means of putting the screen up on straight on the computer. But I'm having to use a handheld camera. Now if you look there you'll see something that says DX spots. Um, that's when you do a reverse beacon search in Google. Go for DX spots and just click on that. Then you'll see on the screen a place where you can enter your call sign. So I'll enter G3OJV. My call. Hit return. And it brings up the map there. And uh, Let's go over here. Brings up the map there. Uh, UK is up the top there, I think. Right, correction. UK is there. We're in darkness now. And if we go to 
down there to Australia, you can see that uh, it's just about to be sunrise. And there's no sign of my signal at the moment because I haven't put a signal out. What we need to do is to send out a test signal. You can put, you can send out CQ, but test is easy because if you send out CQ, you'll, you'll get some replies. And at this point, you don't really want replies. You just want to see what the beacon says. To set the transceiver up, you set the transceiver up anywhere in the CW area of any band. I'm going to operate on uh, 20 meters. On 20 meters, I tend to use the bottom of the band. So I normally uh, set the uh, transceiver at around about 14.020 uh, or thereabouts. It's not critical because these beacons will continually be searching the CW uh, a part of each band. And once you've sent test and your call sign a few times, you should start to see on the screen, which I showed you just now, um, the spots appearing. Now, I anticipate that we won't get too much from Europe. I think we'll get some replies um, or some spots from America. It would be nice to see some spots from Australia. What does tend to happen very often is you see some spots in um, uh, the, um, the Far East, um, around about Japan, some in China and so forth. You don't always get down to Australia. It depends whether the band is, well, let's say the band is open, what the conditions are like. So I'm now going to, um, I've got the amplifier on. Bear in mind, I am running high power, running 400 watts, but I'm running it into a vertical antenna. I've got a, a, four, a Hustler 4B TV down the bottom of the garden. Nothing very special at all. It's ground mounted. Uh, it's got a few radials buried in the lawn, but nothing, uh, no big earth mat at all. It's very simple and we'll see what happens. So I'm now going to call CQ, or C, I'm now going to call test uh, and we'll see what happens. So let's, let's give it a go. Well, that's encouraging, as you can see. Um, rather expectedly, we've got some replies from America, but we've got some um, replies right down there towards China. Um, so we're not too far off from uh, Australia. What I don't know is whether long path or short path is open. Um, normally, uh, during the morning, it's um, long path. Sometimes in the evening, it can be short path. But at the moment, um, we're getting nothing from Australia or New Zealand, but we've got some pretty good uh, reports there um, from the Far East. Let's see if I can um, find out what, uh, whoops. I'm not sure whether the camera will pick it up, but um, we got into uh, China there and it was 17 dB above noise level. So that's not bad actually, um, on a band which is uh, which is fairly quiet at the moment. So it just shows you, even when the band seems to be quiet, it is open. And we are now into the grey line area. Um, we've now gone past sunset. It's now, uh, it's now dark outside and it's just, the um, sun is just rising in Australia. So what I'm going to do now is to have another go. What's the time now? It's coming up to, it's just gone nine o'clock in the evening here. So I'm gonna have another go now and see if we can um, uh, get down to Australia, see if there's anything coming through from Australia. So let's give it an, another go and see, uh, see what happens. Well, 10 minutes later, we're coming up to 20 past nine in the evening now, and you can see that the propagation to the Far East and towards the Pacific is, uh, is getting better, but we've still got nothing uh, down here from Australia. You can just see where the camera picks it up, but just uh, see there that the sun is just rising um, on the, uh, uh, that would be what, the eastern side of uh, Australia. Um, but uh, so far, nothing from the beacons. Um, but uh, 
it, lo it looks promising, but sometimes it looks promising, but nothing happens. But anyway, at least it's, uh, the band is open to the, the Far East. I think what I'll do is I'll leave it for about half an hour. We'll wait for sunrise in Australia, um, or at least uh, where the sun starts to rise in Australia, which should be in the next uh, half hour or so, and then see whether anything, um, any propagation um, occurs. Of course, sometimes you can, uh, we, the, the reason we're doing this test is to see if we get any, any beacons of hearing us. But there are beacons in Australia, they haven't heard us. It doesn't mean to say that uh, it's uh, not possible to work VK, but I suggest them. I, I think at the moment it's just a little bit too early, so we'll, we'll give it a little time and uh, try a bit later. Interestingly enough, I've switched over to the dipole. There's nothing much improved on the Far East there, but uh, got some more signals um, in the USA beacons and the USA responding. Uh, my dipole actually favours basically east-west, so that stacks up with the uh, state side. Um, but the dipole is well, it's actually a half-size 5RV. It's only um, about um, 8 metres above the ground, so nothing special at all. But it's encouraging. If it's only 8 metres above the ground and we're getting some reasonable signals from the Far East, that's, uh, that's quite promising. Of course, all this tends to be a bit of a waiting game. And uh, there's no guarantee, of course, that conditions are going to be particularly favourable. Um, they've been quite good uh, earlier in the week, but uh, when you want to shoot a video, then you find the conditions perhaps don't, uh, don't work for you. <laughs> Although it's encouraging to see that uh, we're well into the evening now. It's uh, nearly half past nine. It's been dark now for about an hour. And there's some good propagation on 20 metres um, down to the uh, Far East and towards the Pacific. And... Uh, it's still possible the Pacific will open up later this evening. And I think a lot of people don't realise that um, how the bands are open at the moment. I mean, I, I'm sure 10, 10 and 15 are dead. Um, and probably 18 megahertz is dead as well. Um, but 20 metres is doing very well at the moment, but you just need the patience. The good thing about grey line is that grey line gives you good propagation, even at fairly low powers. So if you're only running, you know, 50 watts or so, it's worth giving it a, giving it a whirl. But the surefire thing really is to, first of all, check the band is open. You can check by listening to FT8 frequencies there. You don't have to decode it. And if the band's open, then put out a uh, CW call. Now, if you don't operate CW, it's not a problem. If you've got a modern transceiver, most transceivers, most modern transceivers will allow you to enter a, a call or phrase uh, for CW. So you can enter your, normally I would say test, 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 DE, Delta Echo, and then your call sign. Um, and have your call sign sent a couple of times. Once that's in, you can then send that, even if you can't read CW, it doesn't matter. You can send that, it'll be sending out um, a couple of tests or two or three test calls followed by your call sign. And that's enough for reverse beacon to recognize that you are sending out a test call and it will give you a report. And as you saw just now, you get reports from all over the world. So even if you can't operate CW, provided you can put a CW phrase into your transceiver, but make sure it's test, don't do CQ, otherwise you'll get stations coming back to you. Just make sure it's test, 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 D, G, 3, O, J, V, or whatever your call sign is. Well, it's now coming up to quarter to 10 in the evening here in the UK and uh, there's no sign of any um, beacons responding in Australia. You can never really tell whether it's short or long path. I, I got an idea that in the evening, very often it's short path, but it looks to me as if it's not going to be a no-go um, today. So uh, that's, a, that's a shame, but at least you know. That. You know, it's so often happened, you turn the camera off and then something happened, and this happened. I turned the camera off, and I thought I'd give one more chance to see if there's anything, and lo and behold, I got a, uh, a response from one of the Australian beacons. So I quickly stuck, uh, took a still shot, and I'll just put it up on the screen now. So it just shows you, you can't absolutely be sure um, what's gonna happen. The interesting thing about this is that it's, well, it's interesting to, to, to sort of follow propagation. And the good thing about reverse beacon is you get an instant idea of what conditions are like. 
with the power that uh, you're running. And uh, if you do it over a period of time, you start to get to know the band, you learn a bit about the band. So if you think this is interesting, and I hope you do, give it a whirl and see what you can work when the band is perhaps a bit quieter, particularly on the 20 meter band at night. Conditions are quite good. In the winter, likewise, do the same on 40 meters. You might be very surprised. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for supporting this channel, much appreciated. Don't forget at Waters and Stanton, we've got a wide range of products, transceivers, bits and pieces, antennas, whatever you are looking for, we've probably got it on the shelf and we offer very fast delivery. So give us a call or go onto our website. Either way, we'll be happy to supply your needs. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, you take care. And I'll look forward to, as usual, seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.